And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invite you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Whirlpool. Marty South wasn't sure when it began. It was too much like walking in the middle of a nightmare and then remaining in it, living in it. The shipwreck, the confusion, it was all there again, coming back to him, but slowly, hazily. And there was a strange buzzing in Marty's ears, pressure, and the sound of the sea, whirlpool of confusion. And then gradually out of the whirlpool, voices, dimly, faintly at first, but voices, growing, coming closer hey, and closer. You coming around? You'll be all right, Captain. The shot. You'll be closer. But through it all, one thing seemed clear to Marty South, in focus. Those few swift minutes before the ship heeled over on its side, before he leaped for the lifeboat and missed, there was a girl. Yes, a girl standing in the companionway just outside her cabin. Marty remembered her face, her fair skin, her clear eyes, wild as he shouted at her frantically. Hey, don't stand there. Get up to the deck, the lifeboat. Boat? Oh, yes, I was just... Uh, wait a minute. Is anybody inside in the cabin? Cabin? There's... No... No, I'm alone. Then go on. Up those stairs. There isn't much time. Hurry. <laughs> much time. Huh? We got you in time. Can you hear me? I'm the ship's doctor. We're on board the SS Aragon, bound to Singapore. SS Aragon? That's right. Singapore? Here. Try to drink this, Mr. Hastings. Yes. That's all right. I made it. I made it. You sure did, Hastings. Hastings? Yeah, there couldn't be any mistake about his identity, Captain. Huh? Oh, no. No, not who he is. He's Hastings, Doctor. There's no doubt about it. His wife identified him. Oh. Could you get her to come in, Captain? Why? My wife? No, I... No, uh, no, just too bad. You were suffering from shock, Mr. Hastings. Exhaustion and severe shock. No, but... Uh, could you come in, Mr. Hastings? My husband, is he all right, Captain? Uh, just come in, please. No. No, I don't have it. <laughs> You stop, Marty. The protest dying in your throat as you struggle up to one elbow. Look toward the door. It's the same girl, isn't it? The one you faced in the companionway and shouted at. But now she's coming toward you. Darling. Speaking differently. Very different. My darling, I was so afraid for you, but I told them you'd pull through when I told them who you were. What? I... A doctor, she isn't delirious. Don't worry, Mrs. Hastings. Doctor. Yes, Mr. Hastings? Can you... Can you leave us alone? I'm sure I want to 
be alone with my wife. Well, certainly. Captain, we'll wait out on the deck. Anything you say. Okay. Now, you... You tell me what this is all about. But, darling, you shouldn't try to talk. Skip it. I can talk. They fish me out. I'm okay. So you okay. Of course you are. My name's South. Like this, they're in a full-dress suit. It's South. Marty South. It's a nice name. I like it. That's fine. You were... Mrs. Stephen Hastings of the Shanghai Hastings. You can call me Lucy. What about Mr. Hastings? My husband is dead. The one that didn't make it? The one that didn't make it. What happened to him? How come I you... don't know. Stop asking me. Stop looking at me like that. Like what? My husband, Stephen, is like that. In the cabin, when he first hit me along. He just sat there staring as if he woke me. Welcome what? Chance to die? I don't know. You couldn't get him out. No, couldn't I couldn't. send anybody back in. I didn't think there was something like that happening. I couldn't. Haven't you been thinking since? Yes. Plenty of it. But come on, I'm waiting my husband, Stephen, has some money for him today. It's waiting for him now in Singapore. Waiting for Mr. Hastings to pick it up. Any Mr. Hastings will do. 20000 now, 30000 in a couple of weeks. 60000 altogether. Half of it could be yours. Yes. To begin with, how can you pass me off with your husband here on board? There are quite a few survivors, I think. Nobody knew Stephen. He stood in his cabin half the world. Most of the others were picked up by the police. Oh, well, you'll see him in Singapore. No, the police is heading for the United States, and not a soul in Singapore now. Where's the money come from? From an old friend in Shanghai. E.J. Galloway, on a business partner, my husband. You see, E.J. made a mistake on a business deal in Singapore, and I found out about it. I told Stephen what the last day. He did. He got revenge. Take down, huh? You must have felt great giving his old pal the black nail kit. Well, Stephen didn't have to do that. E.J. doesn't know we're the black nail. He thinks Stephen is with go between them. Stephen should pick up the money in Singapore and make the payoff there to a man who's never seen it. You see, Singapore is where he Black nail, will you? <laughs> nice guy, <laughs> your husband. He was, you can never see. But we heard the week. I only got sick sometimes just thinking about it. About blackmailing the very thing. Then why'd you go ahead with it? You like me. <laughs> why? Oh, no, you don't know. I can be quite appealing. Oh, maybe. The guys like Stephen Hastings. But not the guys like Marty Sam. You guessed it. <laughs> we'll see. If you get lonesome for me, darling. That's all, Marty, and then she's gone, leaving me to think it over. But you know her kind. Lucille is a man fat. We figure she'll be back soon to try to help you make up your mind. But that's where you make a mistake, isn't it, Marty? She lets you rest and think. At first, you find yourself strangely curious. Then you think some more, and you decide not to say anything to them about her husband, Stephen Houston. Money is an important item to you, too, isn't it, Matt? Yes. Half a day out of Singapore, you can't stand it anymore. You call the doctor and send for it. Mm, just sitting out, how wonderful. I'm mm, doing better than that. Hey, can you... Oh? You don't look as if you don't know why. And how nice when you say Well, if you want to know what I decided. I know. Yeah? You like money. And you know, I think you like me. You hit it with the first part. But get this. I know what I'm going into. To include you only because you're necessary to my immediate prosperity. I'm very necessary, darling. So as you're having a husband, Steve. Okay, I'll keep my eyes for a while. Darling, I knew you were. Mm-hmm. You're pretty smart, yeah, but here's something you don't know. Your husband made a big mistake when he fell in love with you. I'm not going to make the same mistake. I can't afford it. Oh? I never let love interfere with my plans. Bad business. 
Everything all right, Mr. Hastings? Huh? Oh, yes. Fine, Doctor. Isn't it, dear? I guess so. Sure it is. And don't worry, darling. Go for your bed. Everything is going to be so much better. Soon. <laughs> This being the first program in March, I'm reminded of that old saying, in like a lion, out like a lamb. With signal gasoline, it's just the other way around. It goes into your car as a clear liquid, innocent looking as a lamb. But once inside your engine, it generates the power of a lion. However, while signal's power may be likened to that of a lion, you'll find your car's appetite for signal gasoline is gratifyingly small. After all, gasoline that's engineered to help your engine run as efficiently as today's signal naturally saves gas while you drive, saves with quick starting, saves with smooth pickup free from balking or hesitation, saves with full power that gets you into high gear fast, helps you stay there with a minimum of shifting on hills or in traffic. And of course, the more gasoline you save, the more mileage you enjoy, which explains signals good mileage. And the reason we say mileage and performance go hand in hand. To get both, get Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. Decision, didn't you, Marty, about Lucille Hastings and the money waiting for Stephen Hastings in Singapore? That day aboard ship, when she suddenly thrust opportunity into your hands by asking you to pose as her dead husband, Stephen Hastings. But there's another thing you've decided on, and that's more important than anything else. You're not going to make the same mistake he did, are you, Marty? No. You're not going to fall in love with Lucille. Because that doesn't fit in with your plans at all. Money is still the most important thing, isn't it? Even though you don't have very much of it at the moment, and you've never let a woman interfere, you've never let your heart rule your head where money is concerned. The first night in Singapore, the two of you move easily around the dance floor of the Port Plaza Hotel. Seemingly the very devoted married couple, Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Hastings. Mm. You dance well, dear. Stephen's learned to dance better? <laughs> Much better. Maybe the poor guy was tired. He had a right to be. I think we should stop talking about that. Mm. Suits me. Come on back to the table. Let's talk about when you go to work. All right. The chair? Thank you. <sighs> No, no. Let's see. I think we'd best wait a day or two. You can go there Wednesday for the first thing. The second will be ready in a couple of weeks. E.J. couldn't raise it all at once. Where do I go? Well, I'll have to look at E.J.'s letter again for the exact address. It's a little tailor shop somewhere on Ponderosa Street. Nah, uh, you don't have to look again. Not with that memory. It's a tailor shop. Then why Wednesday? No reason. I just think it's there. Or? Right. Hmm? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't get all this mystery. There <laughs> isn't any mystery. I think If Galloway know. stood still for a 50 grand shakedown, why didn't he just give it to you? Send it to you direct. Why all this movie stuff? Uh, this is my idea, not E.J.'s. You see, in case E.J. couldn't raise the money, or changed his mind, or decided to talk to the authorities, so I thought it'd be much better for me if I were far away. With me, for the fall guy, if anything goes wrong here. There's nothing can go wrong here. There's no crime in having your coat on. What do I do when I get to this tailor shop? As soon as you get out of your place, you can wait for it if you want to. Tell them you're Mr. Hastings. But if they want proof, <laughs> they can call the hotel and ask me to pay But they won't. Oh, relax, darling. Sorry, I can't relax. Not until I've had my coat cut. <laughs> Morning, sir. I want to get this coat press. I'll wait for the uh, name's Hastings. Oh, yes. And you're staying? The Port Plaza. Why? Nothing, Mr. Hastings. Just curious. If you're going to call or anything, my wife isn't there. She uh, 
No, no, Mr. Hastings. Uh, your coat, please. I'll have it for you right away. Good. You watch the proprietor of the little tailor shop as he takes his coat, moves off toward the back of the establishment. You look around nervously, ready to run for it if anything goes wrong. But nothing does matter. He's back in a matter of minutes, isn't he? Handing the newly pressed coat across the counter. You pay him and slip it on. Feel the bulge of a heavy envelope in the inside pocket. Satisfactory, sir? I think so. I think so. Will you be dropping in again? Yeah, yeah. Perhaps if you'd call the day before. Oh, okay. We'll give you quick service, sir. Good morning. Half a block away, you open the envelope and look inside. It's there, isn't it, Mom? Twenty thousand dollars. You smile as you put it away. But there's still another payoff. Another $30,000. It would be stupid of you to walk out now, wouldn't it? And then your pulse quickens and you glance back. You're certain someone's following you, aren't you, Marty? And you realize that Lucille is still thinking as fast as ever. If you guessed you might pick up the money a day early, not wait until then. You turn, hurry down the street on your way back to the hotel. I have to knock the door down. My own husband, what do the neighbors think? Never mind. And inside. Uh, that's all the excitement. What kind of a double cross is this? You had me followed, didn't you? Did I? The fat guy in a white suit. Are you going to tell me what's going on? When you calm down, you might tell me. Well, I went there. It's like you said. The tailor shop? Yeah. Went through the whole routine. Didn't they give you the money? That's not the beef, Lucille. I'm talking about the guy who picked me up on the way out. One of your pals, huh? A high-powered insurance policy. You're not making sense, darling. If somebody followed you, it's because you're in Singapore. Stay out of the alleys, darling, in rough neighborhoods. This is a big, bad city. Wish I could buy that. You can buy anything, Mr. Hastings. How much you get? 20000 Yeah, it's in the envelope. Pretty, isn't it? Darling. Yeah? Speaking of double crosses, I thought I told you not to go to the tailor shop until Wednesday. It's only Tuesday. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll forgive you this time. Will you? I'll try. Oh. <laughs> what are you thinking? Mm, something pretty foolish. But sometimes you'd really like to level. Well, Darling, put your arms around me. What, so I can hold on to the sleigh ride? I wouldn't put you on a sleigh ride, wouldn't you? You'd take anybody on me. Marty, Marty. Marty. Too bad it's not for keeps, Lucille. Tomorrow it could be a knife in my back. I wonder if you want me to say it, but I don't know. Your mind is spinning as you leave her, Marty. You're afraid, aren't you? Because the one thing you've tried to guard against is happening. Slowly, surely, you're falling for her. And you know what it can mean. You don't do anything about it the next day or in the days that follow. Just go along, trying to keep your head above water. Then one night, as you walk alone through the streets of Singapore, you catch sight of him again, the man she's had following you. you. Hurry forward, turn into an alley, and stop. And wait. Here I am, mister. Uh, well, uh, what do you want? Uh, just a moment, mister. I just... I just wanted to talk it over. Talk what over? Why, the deal. I thought maybe you'd changed your mind the way you've been acting, avoiding me. Of course, this is a crazy setup. Oh? I naturally thought you were going to meet me here when you got in last week and set it all up. Uh, naturally, but... Well, I almost forgot what you looked like. You didn't know what I looked like. 
You never saw me before. You made the deal with the man I worked for, remember? I think you'd better keep talking, Mr. Gray is good enough. Mr. Gray. Mm, might be. Oh, I don't blame you for being careful, Mr. Hastings. Our deal like this. But how does this sound to you? You take your wife to the Red Angel Cafe tomorrow night. Just casually have dinner with her, the last one. Then stroll out on the terrace. The terrace? Yes. Hardly anyone ever there. Just give me a chance to get lined up and then light her cigarette. The match will give me a target. An easy one. What do you know? Stephen... It hits you suddenly. Stephen Hastings, the weakling. He'd actually set up a plan to kill her at the end of the voyage. A plan that he was too weak to go through with. Perfect, isn't it? You can get rid of Lucille tomorrow night. And a few days later, you can drop around to the tailor shop, pick up the rest of the money, and leave town. But you're not sure that this is the way you want it to be, are you? Not even for $50,000. What is the matter, Mr. Hastings? You haven't changed your mind. Changed my mind? Well, uh, I would like a little more time to think it over. I've been doing some thinking. I want the $5,000 you agreed on, Mr. Hastings. $5,000. Okay, you'll get it. Yes. Please leave it in your hotel box. Small, new bills. Cash. Yes, yeah, sure. It's great. Yes? If the money's in the box, tomorrow night, you'll see us, my wife and me, at the Red Angel Cafe. On the terrace? Yes. I'm to light the cigarette. That is right, Mr. Hastings. And uh, take your time thinking it over. And it's quite a decision for a man to make. In your position, I don't blame you. You will sleep on it. I don't mind waiting a little longer. And you do think it over, don't you, Mark? All night and all the next day. It's the hardest decision you've ever had to make. You remember Lucille's beauty, her lovely voice, the fun you've had together during the little time you've known her, pleasant times you might have in the future. Then you remember her husband, Stephen. How she persuaded him to blackmail his best friend. How callous she was about her husband's death after the shipwreck. You recall how she lied to you at the time of the shipwreck when you asked her if there was anyone else in the cabin. And that lie made certain her husband's death. You also remember something else. The 20,000 she has. And the 30,000 she's expecting in a few days. And that evening... Darling, how did you know about this place? Uh, the Red Angel? Mm-hmm. I heard somebody mention it. Like it? Very much. And I like you for joining me. Lucille, I... Like... Oh. <laughs> you want to talk? Oh, come on. Where are we going? Out on the terrace. Oh, but... Oh, okay. Terrace. Mm. You can see the light in the harbor. Beautiful, isn't it? Uh, Marty, you, you were going to tell me something, is that? Yeah, yeah, I was. I think I know what it is. You know, Marty, you're, you're not like Stephen, do you? You're anything but me. Except when it comes to putting this sort of thing to you. Oh, give me a cigarette, Tom. What? I said give me a cigarette. Anything wrong with that? No, no, no. Nothing wrong. Here you are. Thank you, Marty. And I just the way you're looking at me, tells me something. You do love me, don't you? I don't know. Do I? Oh, would you give me a light? A light. Yes. You're really beautiful, Lucille. Marty. Something else. Never forget. Yes. Here's your light. Thank you, darling. 
Because the past several months of cold weather have been particularly tough on car batteries, here is some news that's worth remembering. There's now available an improved type battery which is not only much more powerful, but lasts far longer. I'm referring to the new Signal Deluxe battery, available only at Signal service stations. Unlike ordinary batteries, which may be guaranteed for 12 or 18 months, Signal Deluxe batteries are guaranteed a full 30 months on a service basis. Also, Signal Deluxe batteries deliver up to 35% more power to give you quick, dependable starting and to take care of the many electrical gadgets on modern cars. The secret of this superior performance in Signal Deluxe batteries is their superior construction, which includes the latest microporous all-rubber separators, plus an improved design all-rubber case, which doesn't need water as often. When you take into account the generous trade in allowance signal dealers are now giving for old batteries, plus their convenient credit terms, you can see why more paying new batteries at the same station where they fill up with the famous go-farther gasoline at Signal Station. It was like a whirlpool. The shipwreck, the swirling water. Marty South, fighting his way through the sea, awakened to find a new life and wealth placed in his hands by Lucille Hastings. But somehow, in the police station at Singapore, that part of the story was a little concerned as the arresting officers huddled around a man sitting under the glaring white light. Come on, Gray. We know you did it. No, no. You've been followed since you asked for that money in Hastings' hotel box. The clerk didn't like your look. And Mr. Hastings gave me the money. He left it for me. What was it for? The killing? No, no. Gray, you were seen firing the gun. How do you think we arrested you so quickly? Oh, I... I... Well, I did it. But it was Hastings' idea. That's what the money was for. But why did I he... I guess Hastings was just tired of everything. He was a weakling. Suicide's been on his mind for months, only he didn't have the nerve. So he hired us, he, me, to do it for him. But why his wife? Too? Oh, how do I know? He was crazy about her, I guess. Didn't want anyone else to have her. That's the only reason I can think of why Hastings set up this thing. So they'd both die together. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at the same time. Signal has asked me to remind you that today the Red Cross must not only be prepared to save lives and relieve suffering in any disaster that may occur anywhere in this country. In addition, it must provide blood and other needed help for our GIs overseas. Good reason why this year the Red Cross needs more of us to help and more help from each of us. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Jack Moyle, Betty Lou Gerson, Ted Von Elf, Raymond Burr, and Byron Kane. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, the story by Joel Malone, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler was entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at this same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.